Welcome back to Wrapped. What's going on, you guys? It's been a while again. <laughs> Once again, we have taken our second hiatus of 2020. Um, for I'm sure very obvious reasons, similar yeah, to the last one, you know, very obvious reasons. Yeah, like the world ending um, was the first one. The country of America ending is this one. Yeah, just the soft reset that's needed to happen for a while is starting to happen. So, yeah. So, took a leave of absence out of like respect and participation yeah. in the current movements. Like, honestly, like we were just busy. Like, I honestly didn't even have time really to do recordings because we was really just out here doing stuff um, personally and for the movement and just trying to be more yeah. active in that than just. Hey, by the way, here's some music. Um, music could wait. Like it, music, sports, all that could wait. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk about like, there's some stuff I've got here um, on my list of music that's in response yeah. to Black Lives Matter. Um, Definitely. Because I, I feel like everything going on, like that inspires the art, right? So like, mm-hmm. we'll still talk about it here, um, but it's more so after... Um, a lot of the big things have gone down and a lot of like the things that needed to happen have kind of happened, but like we're still yeah. having to push it forward um, every single day going forward from here. Cause it can never stop. Right. Um, even like with like these little steps that are, these little steps of progress that are being made, there's still 400 years of shit to make up for. Like there's a lot to do and we can like start by like arresting the cops that killed Breonna Taylor. Um, for one, because it's a great day to do that. Yeah. And tomorrow is also a great day to do that. Um, today would be better, though. Um, and just, like, it's been cool watching different artists step up and artists that I didn't expect to step up. Um, yeah. To step up. Uh, like, for one, if we're just going to dive right into it, Lil Baby. Um, yeah, for real. Which, I, he deserves a Grammy for that. I, I'm going to give him the rap record of the year for that, just because of how out of nowhere that, that was. Yeah, because if you asked me what rappers did I think were gonna make new songs for this, and you had told me Little Baby was gonna be the first one, I would have been like, "LOL, you're lying to me." Yeah, <laughs> there's no way that he did it, but he did it, and the song is really good, and it addresses like lots of things directly, and it uses footage from like the Atlanta protest, um, and address um like how his music yeah, yeah he's i think he says he says yeah i rap about shooting and killing and dope but i'm still gonna tell my young people to vote and i was like that's a bar go. progress <laughs> that's a bar <laughs> it's just that was just really cool to watch because like i didn't expect that to come from that source like it's good that it is coming from that source because people be more apt to listen to him than anybody else um but it was just it's just been cool to watch people like step up to the plate and kind of use their fame and like things that are necessary, like for a good cause instead of just kind of writing the coattails of something else. Agreed for sure. I like guess it, it would be interesting. Like I have a whole just like rundown sheet. Yeah. Cause like there's a lot of one, there's only like a couple I want to focus on, but like I have a lot of other ones that have just come out that I said, Hey, I'm just going to add this to the list. Cause like, if it came out, like people should just be aware of it. Cause then you're like, Oh, I like that person didn't know that came mm-hmm. out. Let me grab that right quick. So I just have like a full, I have a full cheat sheet on that. Um, yeah. Before there's we a couple old projects too. There yeah. have been. Uh, yeah. It deserves to be revisited. Uh-huh. Um, and I'll talk about those later, but just a couple of now, just like going through looking for stuff to like kind of just lift me up a little bit. And it was like, a couple of old albums that I had listened to and been like, this would be perfect for a time like this. And then it came back and I was like, Oh, it is the time like this. Um, and so that's been really, really cool. Yeah. Agreed. Cause like, it, like I went, I was posting on my personal story, like old albums that have talked about this before a lot of stuff resurfaced from 2015, 2016, when the mm-hmm. same sort of situations were happening. Um, people have been like, all right by Kendrick Lamar is back yeah. on the charts. Lemonade is back on the charts. All these albums that have discussed this before are like coming back to people's minds and going like, dang, this was like so cool then. It's still yeah. cool now and it's still important. And it's now. so relevant to everything that's going on all the time. And it's expanded into all genres of music. Like last night, uh, Yeah, Me Too um, 
was doing was a part of the Beyond Wonderland stream, and he played Formation and ended his set with FTP by UIG. And um, I don't know what the song start. I don't know what the song is called, but he started off with that guy singing in. Um, you know the street is just still fuck the boys in blue, and I remember just like cracking up because it's it's a funny song because it's this really sweet thing that he's just saying these absolutely brutal things, but it was still like defund the police, like it was still like pushing that, and it's been really interesting to watch the just is it something that I'm a part of? I rather I like to say deeply like the EDM community and how. Um, a lot of people have been called out there for not mm-hmm. saying things or mm-hmm. um, kind of just being like, oh, I'm worried about losing followers and seeing the people that just really don't care. And they're like, this is a thing that needs to change and watch how aggressively they go after it and how aggressively they're involved. Um, like Grizz, for example, uh, was out has been out protesting so much and has been out supporting that. And his last virtual set, he was, he was gonna, originally going to donate half of it to like um one of the funds but he ended up donating i think all of it um and used that time he only played black artist and only played um and there wasn't like a lot of footage of him djing it was footage from the denver protest Mm -hmm. which were really cool um and so it's been fun to watch communities kind of come together and we're like protecting human lives because that's it at the end of the day that's what it's about like um and music is a great way to express that. And it's been kind of like weird to see who's not. Cause it's like, Hey, I would have thought you would have said something. Yeah. Um, and then it also brings up the other side where it's like some people who have been talking about this forever. Um, just like not directly addressing it. Like Dave Chappelle um, in that 846 special was like, I remember I thought his take on it was really cool. Not cool, but interesting. Where he was like, I've been talking about this for years. They don't need me right now. Yeah. Um, and he was like, nope. And he brought up the whole Ja Rule thing. He was like, nobody gives a fuck what Ja Rule has to say. Um, because honestly, nobody really, we like, there's a time, there's a time for them to give their platform. And there's like a time for them to be like, I've said my piece. This is y'all's. I'll be a distraction. Um, and so I thought that was cool that he says like, oh, I've, I'm very passionate about this. We're going to talk about it at a comedy special. And you can, t- and he even addressed it in the special. He was like, um, I'm sorry this is so depressing, but we got to talk about it. Um, and so that's been really, really cool. But in the yeah. light of all this, Lady Gaga's album came out, and that was full of joy and happiness. Yeah, that was the wild part. It was like that. It came out like the weekend that it like really started to bubble up. Yeah. And I was just like, this is interesting because I, she initially delayed it because of COVID. It was supposed to come out April 10th, way back. She's like, I'm delaying it because of COVID drops it and i think like later on she was like i honestly had i known i would have delayed it like yeah i waited had had it been pushed one more week i would have pushed it even further but it was fine because like it came out it was like you know you know what this is kind of cool because like we need to hear something really fun and positive similar to like the weekend with after hours like he said i'm keeping that date it's still coming out yeah and that was a great piece to have during covid because it was like something that was new but it wasn't talking about directly about the topic but like it's mm-hmm. still it was necessary i feel with chromatica because the whole thing was just about like loving and like loving yourself loving your friends family and other humans i was like yo this is so relevant actually to right now without even trying to be that yeah. right like it yeah, was not exactly. a political album but it ended up being an album that like when you listen to it you're just like i need this like i need to hear exactly like love and so that was the wild exactly. part is like, I think like years later, we're going to look back and be like, do you remember when Lady Gaga dropped that album that was super relevant to the time without meaning to be relevant at all? That was buck wild. Yeah. It's timing and it kind of just shows like kind of artists that she is and the ones that she like has around her, that it's that powerful message of love that is getting across. Yeah, um, it is absolutely insane. I was just like, yeah, it's, it's, it's such an interesting one because she put out like um, a whole th- a video. She's like, I recorded a video to like the seniors of 2020, um, but I've decided to change it because I recorded a different one that you won't see because it only talked about COVID. Um, but now we're going to talk about everything. Um, yeah. And so my tone is very different towards this one. And it was just like so interesting about how things have rapidly changed. And it's going to be weird 
to do wrapped um, album of the year at the end of this because it's going to be like I feel like every year that like we've looked at it and we've done it we've been like this year was cool it had this and this but like as a whole you're like I don't really know what to say like how do I define this year versus this year we're going to say there was music that was directly inspired by and not directly inspired by the events of 2020 absolutely it's gonna be so interesting because we'll always forever look back and be like yo why is the baby have a mask on his album because covid why is there all this artwork for black lives matter because that happened again this happened and why like is there like the panic like why is like there mass panic and in, in, um anything that came out in fall of 2020 because the election happened like it's gonna be so interesting to look back and say bro yeah. This year, we can actually, for once, define the music of this year. Versus before, it was like, uh, this was, like, really cool. Like, there was long albums or short albums. There was rap. There was pop. There was this. It's just, like, yeah. every other year. But this year be different. It's going to be a cool year to, re- like, look back on and be like, this is what I thought was the best thing to happen. Because um, there's still a lot of time left for albums to come out this year. And a yeah. lot of time for people to put out music and to make statements for and or against um it will be interesting to see what happens um in this in this election year yeah like it's going to be interesting to like look back and we'll like say like listen 2020 that year sucked but the music i think as we're seeing now and we we'll, can probably continue to see is my prediction the music was fire like yes the music was so good and then we'll, we'll be looking back like with the grammys down the road and saying Remember that time they had an urban category? Remember that time that like before 2020, they did yeah. all of this shit? They don't do that no more. Or things are different. Or they're actually putting up more rap albums and like honoring more people of color because it was long overdue and we were yelling about it at the top of 2020. But now it's 2022. We're not just doing pop friendly albums for album of the year anymore. Yeah. Like we're not seeing another 2012 rap album going to Macklemore anymore, even though that continued to happen for eight more years. Oh, it's 2023 now. And like, we're actually honoring people who should get these awards and nominations. Exactly. It's going to be, it's like, it's like such a interesting turning point. I think we're ever going to look back and be like, damn, 2019 was different it's the best year so far it's been it's been fun to watch everything kind of collapse uh it was it was time just it was time yeah it was time for a shake up all right that being said let's get into it um outside of the topic we've been discussing i just had to hit up because i had a lot of music that was initially lined up um because we're covering everything between may 16th and june 20th so it's like a five week long long gap a lot of cool music came out then um but i specifically chose i guess you could say three or five things that were not related to anything at all happening currently that i think just should be on everyone's radar um firstly kyle about to come out with a new album kyle straight up because this man he released way back a little bit ago uh, what it is, mm-hmm. which is he was like, this is my first single of my new album that I've been making. And then on June 19th here, he released Bouncing, which is produced by Hitboy. Um, so he has two singles out now that are actually technically three because he also had the Yes song with KK. Yeah. Yes, yeah. this is three. This is three yes. of them. Yeah, yes. Um, so he has three singles out now that he says are all going to be on his next album. But he says it's coming soon, but has no release date planned out just yet yeah um they're all good and he said too like this album is going to revisit his first start when he was 17 because if you watch the two music videos for bouncing and what it is he put a side-by-side comparison of his first like three music videos with Mm -hmm. these new videos and they are shot for shot recreations yeah but it's him dressed in more modern clothing, how he looks now. And the music is supposed to be this full circle kind of moment for him. And it's for his day one fans. So Mm -hmm. I'm hype. As we all know, 2018, Kyle made my favorite album, number one um, of that year. So I'm curious um, what's going to happen with these. Then 
we got to talk about GEZ right quick. Because this man is also going to um, be releasing an- another song. Didn't even listen to it yet. Um, some sort of album, right? With, yeah. I, I don't know what it's going to sound like. I think the whole album, because he released this Free Porn, Cheap Drugs, Stand By Me, produced by Marshmallow. Um, and this Everybody's Gotta Learn Sometime. Yeah. And this is the cover art for whatever this is going to be called. The whole album is going to sound like this. Because like you texted me and you're like, bro he really on that pop punk like what not even it is like trying to be john mayer yeah you're trying to be like john mayer it's it's not rapping he's saying young, young mayor on the track young mayor on the track it's I, I i like it personally i like it i had a friend of mine who's a big easy fan he texted me he's like bro i know he has this and i know he has another he has um uh what's he's having a sequel to this when it's dark out i think when it's dark out two or these things happen too okay he's releasing that at some point as well and both of them were supposed to be out by now but then the black lives matter movement happened he said nah this isn't the right time or space i'm a i'm a white rapper no one needs to hear me talk about this shit right now Mm -hmm. postpone them indefinitely but my one friend was like i'm hyped for these things happen too but I really hate these new songs. I was like, bro, what are you talking about? These are great. He, we have very different opinions on G-Eazy, but he I liked these songs. It's style of like rap, though. It's mm-hmm. very, very him. Like, nobody else can rap like g but g Right. And similar Young to like general. how I love Logic Supermarket when only fans usually liked it, critics absolutely hated it. I loved it. I thought it was one of his best albums he's ever made. It was so damn yeah, good. It's a good album. It was just weird to hear somebody like that. Right. I hadn't really like made a connection with that genre before. Like with, mm-hmm. like with MGK and this like pop punk wave that he's on right now. Right. Like that, that isn't as surprising because it's yeah. like he did all of Warp Tour. Mm-hmm. Or like he's screams at his shows. Like he has a full band. It's just, it's a he's covered Blink One Eight Two songs at all of the shows I've seen him do. And it's um and so that's not far. So I think it was just kind of a really big twist to why does he come out here and do this? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that's fair. I was just like, oh, I wasn't prepared for it necessarily. I was like, all right, uh, here we go. I'm also not the biggest John Mayer fan when he sings. Yeah. As you like, know that. I like John Mayer when he just plays guitar and hires other people to do the speaking. Um, right. That's fair. Like if this, if the sound of this genre, whatever you want to call it, is not for you, then you definitely won't like it. I don't, yes. I don't have, I don't love or hate the sound of that genre. Like I'm pretty in, indefinite on it. I love John Mayer, but yeah. I like this G Easy thing. I like it when artists do something super out of left field. Um, and I don't even love G Easy that much, but I enjoyed these. I'm just curious. He had the ad lib of 2017. But a treaty, linguini, linguini. Yeah, so that I'm album curious. was really. I will say that album was really good. That album was good. And so, and he hasn't released another full length album since then, because like B sides no, and scary the nights are and the Halloween one. Yeah, those are not full lengths. So, and he no. said every year, I got my next album on the way. And my friend keeps telling me he's like, I think that he meant this next album. I don't think he meant scary nights. And I said I agree. I don't think he yeah. meant these EPs. It just hasn't happened yet. Like he's planned to release this album. Maybe he had a creative block. Maybe he had a new idea. Who knows? Maybe but he I'm just curious. It and was like, oh, I want to start over. Yeah, that's fair too. Maybe he's just like, I got my laptop storm. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> like, yeah. You never know. Um, but lastly, then I have this song experienced by this girl named Victoria Monet, which features yeah. the lead. The this... one she's featured on? What? Uh, all night long, not all night long. Um, a little more by MGK. Yo, that's who this is. Cause that I have not her. looked into her profile like at all. To be honest, I, I thought I hadn't heard of her. Let's go down to your features. Wow, you've done a lot of things. Appears on general admission. Go up, go back up. Yeah, I probably scroll by it. First one, Dime Trap by Tia. Oh my Sorrell's gosh, general yeah. admission. You right? Yeah, dude. Okay, so I have heard of this girl before. Um, but I love Khalid and they, they put out a thing saying like, we initially meant to put this out like earlier. We decided not to, we decided to not put this out at all. We kept going back and forth. Um, yeah. but then we're like, you know what? We are both black and 
that is who deserves to be in the spotlight, even though this song is not related to any of the things going on now, because it's made before that. It's just, we want to put out something positive. Like, it's almost like escapism. And I was like, yeah, yeah totally. Put it out. And, bro, it's so good. The production on it is I listen to fire. it. It's awesome. It's so good. The production's awesome. crazy. So, like, I'm – now, yeah, now she's on my radar. So, like, I'm looking forward to whatever full length she's going to put out. Um, yeah. Her and um, Valentina, um, who we talked about in the last episode, uh-huh. are, like, two artists that I'm, like, heavily watching and, like, hoping I don't miss anything else from because she's i remember she's was really been really good since i heard her on a little more because she has such a captivating voice mm-hmm. and i think her and khalid make a very nice pairing like oh, if totally. it kind of became like just a series of collabs like mm-hmm. um like the drake and rihanna collab collabs that happen every once in a while um, without like the, the toxic relationship in the middle of it <laughs> yes <laughs> yes because she, i think she said she's part of the queer community and Khalid is honestly, I don't freaking know what Khalid at all. Khalid like, is Khalid. Khalid is Khalid. He's like physics SpongeBob a little bit, you know? <laughs> like, even though like Nickelodeon Loki came out and was like, listen, SpongeBob is part of the LGBTQ community. Yeah, also, but also, honestly, if you did not know that SpongeBob was a part of that, you've been watching the wrong show. Yeah, like where you've been at. But also, he's never like, dated anyone on that show in the first place. Yeah. So like, so, like, I'm not surprised. I remember when we all, like, there was that whole rumor that went around that was supposed to be, like, an adult comedy before um, it became, before it became a kid show, excuse me, that it was, a, like, an adult comedy about, and him and Patrick were gay, and everybody was, like, ooh, yeah. about that. Um, so, I don't have a whole lot of new music to talk about, because a lot of my... Um, music listening to has been get me going back in time a little bit to listen to some artists from the past that have addressed it and first one that we can talk about that I want to talk about that everyone should listen to because no, not enough people did when um, it came out was Us or Else A Letter to the System by T.I. Um um, so I'm a big T.I. fan and this one is accompanied by like a short film that he made where it's like three oh, different yeah. sides of himself um, like there's like the business mogul there's like the activist and there's um, like the gangster I believe it was and it was one it's really cool to watch and it's like a set to the album um, but it this album in particular and just from top to bottom has so much to say about how black people are treated in America and it's us or else like a letter to the system. And it came out in 2016 around the time of the shootings of like Mike Brown and um, the beginning of the modern black lives movement, which is like the modern civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. Um, And one thing in just somebody that will segue nicely into who I'm going to talk about next is a killer Mike makes an appearance on 40 acres which is in my opinion the best song on this album um just objectively but killer mike is incredible which (laughs) brings me to uh killer mike and run the jewels yeah Um, i was gonna say that's on my list here so if you don't know killer mike it's okay because you a lot of people don't know who he is but killer mike is one he's a legend if you haven't watched uh trigger warning on netflix you definitely should um it's it's really really interesting to watch but run the jewels actually it is a modern one but run the jewels four has so many little little things on it about basically fucking up the system um and which is something that i have come to appreciate run the jewels doing and speaking out about and like how to be a proper ally with lp and like how um Killer Mike has kind of become gone from this just rap figure to like the ultimate one of like the ultimate modern like popular culture leaders Um, and how much he's doing for the black community with how much money he's trying to get back in pockets of people. Um, And also just music wise, I got Zach De La Rocha on here on just with Pharrell Uh, and with Pharrell. 
uh, but Zach De La Rocha fronted uh, fronts Rage Against the Machine. Um, and Rage Against the Machine is the ultimate anti-government, in my opinion, is one of the ultimate anti-government yeah. bands because they're a band that fuses rap and punk rock and whatever the fuck Tom Morello does on the guitar because I don't know what to call that. It's just Tom Morello, Tom Morelloing. Um, and so if you just want to know how a lot of people feel, go through and listen to a Bulls on Parade, Killing in the Name of, um, even the Bulls on Parade cover by, if you don't want to watch a rock band do it, watch uh, Denzel Curry. Yeah. Uh, take it and cover it because he did a great job. Um, also, Machine Gun Kelly did a cover of Killing in the Name with Travis Barker. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was cool because they don't let just anybody do their music. And especially not big artists don't get to do rage against the machine covers that often. So it's really cool to watch MGK do that. It's also been cool to watch him um, surprise people with how active he's been. Yeah. In these protests. Cause a lot of people, I don't think realize that he has a black daughter. So like, this is like close to him. And so it's been cool to watch him be out there. And there's the video of him, Trey songs, um, Terrence yeah, J, Al there. Harrington. What? I think Usher's there too. Probably mm-hmm. Usher was probably there in, yeah. LA, in that circle when he was handing out snacks and then they all just had that rage or two all right by Kendrick Lamar and it was just him just walking around and like talking about it and it was it was really cool to watch somebody that I like he's my favorite rapper like talk about it so strongly and not just kind of like kind of pussyfoot around like hey I'm white but I'm a rapper I don't, right. I don't talk about this like he was like no and he's been doing it like if you go back to general admission he talks about um the baltimore shootings um and he was like and he was very vocal about that and he posted a video much like eminem did on um his bet freestyle in 2016 i think it was 2016 it was 2016 2017 where he like do that line in the dirt mgk did that too and mgk also um was like setting up places for people to actively um like give and like donate and it was cool to watch him like use like his power because he is not a small human being no it was cool to like watch the protests of him like kind of stepping in front of people to be like i'm i'm gonna be on the front lines and it wasn't like taken away it was like very much a i'm a part of this movement and that was really really dope um so definitely listen to us or else by ti watch uh <laughs> That big old trigger warning for the video um because it is it is graphic um and it's a lot of role reversal um it's a black cop shooting a white kid i believe i was a part of it as well um but just kind of take to heart that and watch watch trigger warning with an open mind um because it some of it is outlandish even to me but it makes sense in how you need to keep like giving to the black community we also need to make people aware that you can't just silence people or like take away their shows because some people are losing shows in like positions because of their stances on this and the fact that people can so easily have like their dreams and like things that they work for taken away because they just happen to believe that my life matters just as much as theirs is ridiculous and so we as fans have a duty to find those artists that are getting that have the possibility of getting blackballed and not letting that happen like we can we have the power to turn anybody into the biggest independent artist in the world and those people deserve more than our like respect um like i remember i think it was john boyega was like i don't know if Mm -hmm. i'm gonna have a career after this and i was like he's i'm gonna buy a ticket to everything he does yeah from here on out and then like star wars came out and said oh no we stand with you and he was like yeah. cool i don't he's like he said like, personally i don't care like this is more important to me than that yeah um but then his work came forward for him and was like hey like listen like we with you like you know if no one else wants to hire you we'll probably just give you your own freaking trilogy who cares like, we'll i mean do it we can spend a whole lot of time talking about how wrong they did my boy in those movies, but agreed. Yeah. That's a different, that's a different podcast. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you said a great point about like seeing celebrities or particular musicians is who we're talking about. Right. 
um, come out into the streets with the protest movement. It's interesting because it's like, I feel like with COVID, we had a lot like celebrities were really in the hot pot, right? Where they were like being cooked basically because it was like celebrities are getting testing, celebrities are doing this and all this, like it's pointing out the inequality, which yeah. I agree with. And it's kind of interesting to see some of them come out and like they're, we realize at the end of the day, they're just like you and me, man. Like they, that just happens to be their job. Their job is yeah. getting in front of people and their job may pay them quite a bit more than we will make. Right. Yes. But it's cool to see them come to like the human level of just being like, they're not up in this high tower. Um, maybe not at least uh, mentally, like they're mm-hmm. down here with us as well. And it was kind of cool to see them come forward. Like you're seeing these celebrities on the streets, you're seeing celebrities protests, you know, and it's cool. Like MGK is just like, you want a snack? And some people are going to be like, oh shit, it's MGK. Some people are going to be like, who are you? And some people are going to be like, it's MGK, but like, I'm not going to bother him. Cause like, he's just yeah. out here. Like, like me, like no one's going to come to me. And, like, and then cool. other artists would be like, Hey, come to the protest. You'll see me. He's like, mm-hmm. if you've ever wanted to meet me, come take a walk. Mm-hmm. Like, come take a picture. To, like, yeah. And they've been drawing people out. And like, I know Grizz had a hand in getting that turnout to be in Denver, to be as large as it is because of people who just, who were wanted to be a part of it, but didn't want to until they saw somebody of his stature and of his like place in the music industry coming and to really, really talk about it and really, really like make it be known. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like using your platform to, to help others who don't have 20,000 followers who are not verified on Twitter, like yeah. getting that audience. And he's of lost people. a bunch of followers. Yeah, and like people are gonna like, lose and, followers for sure during this. Like Denzel Curry was like, I've lost a lot of followers. I've seen a lot of y'all commenting on my posts, things that I don't agree with. And you don't you don't have to follow them. like Seth Rogan, straight up, people like would tweet him like all lives matter or whatever, or some other bullshit. And he would Stop reply back. Movies. You don't deserve them. Yeah, you don't deserve them. We're like, get fucked. Like just like something like funny. He would reply to every single one which is great yeah i loved it he like, had time that day right like you're seeing like people like normally celebrities they ain't gonna tweet you back they're not gonna they don't have time for that or they're just so many things flying in like now all of them are pausing for a minute and like they're coming out on the streets it's just it's just really interesting to like see that happen because like even like i mean he was pretty much kind of his face was hidden because he was pretty big but kendrick lamar was just like by himself no one else, no friends, no security, nothing. Just walking, just chilling. Yep. Like, marching with the people. Marching with people. I mean, like, like I said, his face was covered because of like one, COVID. Um, yeah. And two, it didn't want to turn that situation into a hijack moment of like, it's Kendrick Lamar. It was yeah. more just like, listen, I'm here. If you recognize me, what's up? You can take my picture for free and post it. I don't care, but I'm just chilling. Like, it was, it's cool, like, seeing these people like, just, and I remember somebody on Twitter, I forgot who it was, but they were like, well, why hasn't Kendrick Lamar said anything? And I was like, bro, he doesn't have like, to not listen to the pimp a butterfly. Like he is, he made like the new, the revolution is not televised. Our version of that is all right. Yeah. Like that song is going to be around forever just yeah. because of how impactful it is. Just like how, um, like this performance of it at the Grammys is going to be super impactful. Um, uh, Christian rapper KB when he did I Believe We Will Win at the Dove Awards uh, which is the Christian music which is the CCM Grammys um, and he had the address coming together and like ending police through brutality just from how they had that set up on stage um, and I think it's really cool that everybody's kind of preaching this come together and learn um, because this is the biggest teaching moment we're going to have for the rest of, probably not for the rest of our lives but for the immediate future this is the moment where we can teach the most and it's good to see people that have the power to teach teaching and not just kind of uh, taking it easy you know what i'm saying yeah that's a good way to put it um that being said i'm gonna run through my chore list of just 20 probably songs of just things to point out that are that have come out like literally like weeks in the past like week or two in relation to um black lives matter so firstly we got here terris martin he's a producer mm-hmm. uh he like yeah. worked on like all of like kendrick lamar's ish but yeah he was a song called pig feet 
with um, Kamazi Washington. Then yeah, Kamazi Washington, and then the other listed artist who's equal to him is Denzel Curry. <sighs> it's fire. It's really yes. good. That's a that's a good one. Um, depending on how you feel about this artist, right? It, and he's also deceased, which is interesting. But yeah. I guess they dug this up of riot, which well, that's what we got right now, right? We got like protests and riots. Um, this is an interesting one because it's posthumous. Um, mm-hmm. So that that came out if you're into that. Um, Conway the Machine, who is part of Griselda, dropped this and like yes. this, this cover art is so good that um, song is super powerful super powerful like just straight bars um and conway by himself is great as well outside of this topic um then t grizzly and queen nija with the detroit youth choir about mr this Officer. was also one that was unexpected because i did not expect same. t grizzly to speak out like this this was same. this is another one that made me happy same um, this one this one like this one surprised me big time it was and this is different because it's not just bars it's a lot yeah. of singing right whereas the past two i've listed are, are were bars um okay this is one of the best female songs i've ever heard in my life mm-hmm. this shocked me because like it's so good because i don't I, meek is okay like I, I mean i don't have anything against him i just haven't yeah. been into him he said some songs that i'm like that's a bop this song really is a bop though and it's important so it's very important that's a good one. Similar to the little baby one. Took us by surprise, I would say. Yes. Um, Trey's songs, these were interesting. He put it as a double single with Back Home, but th- this is more of the song for the topic of literally yeah. 2020 riots, how many times. Like, Trey songs was really out there, and I was like, wait, Trey songs is relevant? This is crazy. Like, it, was, it is pretty cool. I thought these were good. The Summer Walker feature was interesting. Um, I heard the 2020 riots one. That was really good. That one was um, that one was better, I think. Okay, so this song is big, and then they put out a straight up BLM remix with another verse from the baby, where he was just like talking about the movement versus the song initially was like not about the movement, not really at all about the movement, not really at all. But now it went number one, and it was yeah. just like, bruh, like two young new black artists are becoming household names with this. And he's about to have like a city a meeting with like city leaders to talk about black lives matter too the baby is in charlotte yeah like he's straight up he's out here so that was cool um okay we've got to pause for a minute snow on the bluff so j cole comes out of nowhere has he was protesting he was part of the protests and the and the riots and whatnot um in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He was out there, as usually is at almost any protest, because that's just what he does. But this came out of so left field. It was on like a Tuesday. And at first, like we were like, this is basically False Prophets. This is not a single to a new album at all. Just like False Prophets was calling out yeah. Kanye. And I was like, okay. And then I listened to it and I was like, musically, it's fire. The production, the singing, his cadence, his flow is fire. But then when you look closer, it's like not what I was expecting. It's like, is this a song? This is not like any other song where all the other songs are like, for the protest movement and are like, you know, let's stand together and everything. This one was like, let's get down for the protest movement, but I'm going to call someone out. Who's part yeah, of the and that, I didn't really agree with him like calling people out because like, it was if, weird. He's, like especially with who he he called out no name. Yeah. Um and she has become a leader of this kind of, of this movement, really. And I didn't necessarily agree with his reasoning behind kind of calling her out. Yeah, because like she was like, I just need I need some people to do things like what and he was kind of like i don't read a lot stop being mean to me and i was like you well you can read more because i know you're college educated yeah and like even if like like yes you've said things before and like yes he like has done the tour but like it's not i don't i don't think it was necessarily necessary to be like please stop being mean to me i just don't read a lot like i've been sad it was interesting because like when i first heard it i was like yeah j cole and then i read the lyrics and i was like 
huh? And then I read that an article and I was like, what? And then at first I was like defending him because I, I mean, I love J. Cole, man. As yeah. an artist, I love him. But then it was kind of like, I kind of paused for a minute and I was like looking at the tweets that he was putting out because he was like, I stand behind every word of this song, but go follow No Name. And then he like reposted her song and I was like, is this gaslighting? I'm so confused. Like I felt gaslighted as a fan. Yeah, like, it, was it, was, it was weird. It was weird. It was weird. It was weird to say the least. It was it was very, very strange. She just like tone policed her. And then like the most important like thing I saw too was someone was like, bro, like, listen, black people are already out here dying and women are already oppressed. And then on top of that, she's both of them. Why are yeah. we out here like suppressing black women? You should have just been like, Yeah, you're right, my bad. <laughs> It was, yeah, it was weird. Like, I don't know. I feel like this should have been released on SoundCloud. And then given the like, yo, what are you doing? I probably would have been like, you know what? I was tripping. Because I know yeah. he's very much on the nose of like, I saw someone like trying to like reconfigure his point of saying like, listen, for a lot of artists, music is therapy. And they're talking to a therapist and they just put it out. They just put it out. They may not stand behind it a week later. And I'm like, that's a fair point. But he yeah. still came out and was like, I stand behind this. And I was like, huh? It was just weird. It felt like, I don't know. I don't know where this is going. I think it's an article that someone said, I think that we all just better just leave it behind and forget about it. And I was like, that's kind of fair. Because she responded, I mean, like, um, this song 33 was kind of her response. Just one verse. She it said just, what she needed to say. And that, that's why I felt like someone said, what's really important about this song is that she addressed it, but the whole song, it, she could have just been like, I'm going to drag him like he drug me. And she just pointed it out. And then she redirected it to, we should be focusing on the movement and trans people are dying and all these other yeah. things that are like super important. So that was like, someone said like, this was like a, a masterpiece because she was able to like take it and then redirect it to the direction. Yeah, exactly. That pointing to and i was like i mean you're right also the mad lib beat was fire um mm -hmm. and she also didn't because she's always released her singles under song with number name she didn't call this j she didn't call this call world she didn't call it anything really she just continued to call it whatever yeah. she's moving forward with which honestly fascinated me but that was a nice little pause um did you listen to this imperfect storm ep no by Walde? It's actually really good. I'll I'll check it out. I'm always down to come back to Wale. It's I think it's, he's a really good rapper. He just annoys me sometimes. Yeah, no, this is really good. Um, it, the whole thing is not all about the movement. It, it's more just like it's inspired by it. Yeah. Um, but it's it's really quite strong. Um, then, bro, did you listen to Lockdown by Anderson Pack? I did. So it's good. so good it is so good because it this is probably the most different than any other song i've listed so far because had i not been consciously listening to the lyrics I'd be like oh this is a vibe i'm on the beach no big deal whatever i'm chilling when you listen to the, the lyrics you're just like damn there's some real shit right like i think wow. he came he had, he i love anderson Park and for the fact that whenever he has something to say he says it and like, even though he is like the smiley guy in like rap and R and B, it is very clear that something had him fired up when he sat down to write this. And yeah. I'm so glad that something did have him fired up. This is I right. put this up right up there, the little baby. This needs, yes. a, Grammy, this needs a Grammy nomination because like Definitely. the approach of it is so different. In like, totally takes you for like a left turn when mm -hmm. really we're, we're turning right. Like, yeah, it was buck wild for sure. All right, last one. Beyonce. I mean, Bay has been at it, man. Like Lemonade Tar charting again. She already had the Savage remix, and then she said, "Hold up, wait a minute. I released that one album about how important Black people and women are. Let me just remind you once again." Um, in case you forgot. In case you forgot, this song was the song was good. It is different, but also similar to stuff she's released before. Um, I don't really have much to say other than it's good. It's a Beyonce song. It's not going to be bad. It's either going to be good or scale of good to like astronomically amazing. Yeah. Somewhere in there. I'm going to call it pretty darn damn good. 
for now. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think she, I, she's also getting ready. The rumor is she's getting ready to do a uh, Destiny's Child tour. <laughs> yeah, I can see Which that. will be nuts. It would be nuts. 2022. Um, but that's my like chore list of all the songs that people should hit those up. Are all, those are good songs. Listen to those. Yeah, listen we, to all of them. But of them. there's listen definitely some else. that... And yeah. Run the Jewels 4. Yeah, listen to Run the Jewels 4. And then just go back in the catalog, as you said. Like, listen to Kendrick Lamar. Listen to Joey Badass. Listen to Everybody by Logic. Like, listen, er, listen to Rhapsody, you know, Black Women rapper. Watch Insecure. Yeah. I watched all of it in a week. Oh, that's a, it's such a great show. So good. I was the sleeping on it. The last thing that I want people to listen to is this... I need this to get yo. <laughs> um, yo. So for those of people who don't know, Yay versus the people um, is Kanye West and Ti having a conversation over a beat with T- Kanye representing Kanye and Ti representing everyone else, and it is one of the most interesting songs to have that either artists have ever released because it's. It, it it spawned from them having a conversation after um, Kanye came out as a Trump supporter. Um, I don't know why, you know, like he came out the closet, but like he revealed himself to be a Trump supporter. And more like he was like, yeah. I'm changing my mind. Because like we all thought, or it, it seemed, I mean, this is the man that said, George Bush don't like black people. Yeah. And, and then fast forward to 2016 in 2018, was this 2018? Yeah, this was yes, 2018. This was, this was the weekend that Infinity War came out. It was. Yo, we were in um We were in the theater. In the theater. I remember I saw this in game. Yeah, we in the car. Yeah, that was nuts. Yeah. Um at, watch the I'll find the link and send it to you um of the video of them recording it because it started out as them just having a conversation. And then Kanye goes, I'm going to show you the song I wrote. And then TI like responded to something he said, then Kanye goes, "No, nope, say that on the song." And so T.I. just recorded recorded a line. They stopped. Then Kanye sat down, recorded a response. Then T.I. came back. So it was truly them just going back and forth in something that I really, really think is valuable in rap music as like just a medium of um, communication. And it's something that's not done. In my opinion, it's something that's not done enough of just having in like in these situations where you can have two rappers have a conversation that'll take the world by storm um in like another great song that does that is run the jewels legend has it because that is killer mike and lp like killer mike has a couple bars lp has a couple bars they like have verses but then it just bounces back and forth and it's things that address current issues while still being something that you could mosh to um and just watching what like just like watching this and watching the video and watching ti get so frustrated but being like this is my friend i need to talk him like because at the end of the day like he was like ti and Kanye have collaborated before and it's gone great um and it was really cool watching two people that are probably two of the most outspoken people in hip-hop politically have this conversation over a piece of music and so definitely check that out and that is where i'll leave it but what do you think of uh the whole uh rumor that kanye's support of trump was a hoax and that he's actually getting rid of all these maga hats and he he him and kim used him to free people from jail i mean i would love for that to be true right i would i hate like it's one of those like do the ends justify the means because it's a great thing mm, that they got the people out of a, jail. That's a bar. That's very yeah, but like interesting. if it compromised so much of it, like because a lot of people took that, myself included. A lot of people like we like I see Kanye as a genius. Like he is somebody yeah. that's like musically, just lyrically as a poet. Um, if you ever go back and watch him on Def po- like Def Jam poetry, um watch him do that because it's nuts just like watching him this guy do that and all of a sudden he's like this is 
in the, going back to what you said for like the guy who's like who got on TV and scared the shit out of Mike Myers and Chris Tucker by just saying George Bush does not care about black people. Like watching him just be like be a Trump supporter was weird and it it hurt. And so like it's not something that I necessarily think came out and was like gotcha one I don't think anybody would believe that at mm-hmm. this point in time. Mm-hmm. Also I think it would be worse just as a career move to be like this was a hoax because then it kind of shows that you don't actually stand for anything that Mm. you're just kind of willing to say something to get famous and that's not going to help at all either that's a fair Um, point so like i don't i wouldn't i would have rather him like been like just fully gone crazy or blame it on the meds i'll even take that excuse even though mental health is an excuse to be an idiot like it is if he was like i was off my meds and i was just it was a giant two year and a half year manic episode i'd be like you know what glad you're back but if it was like oh it's like this isn't for real i'd be like shut the fuck up like this is dumb like i would hurt more um, mm, i think i agree with that because i was like hmm i, mean, I wasn't sure how i thought about that i was just like i mean that'd be kind of cool if it was true but then again it's just like bro how many times am i gonna get dragged around as like uh, trying to be a fan or trying to be something and just feel yeah. like I'm constantly just shoved against a wall of trying to find some way of defending you or trying to find some outlook on exactly. it. Exactly. Having this argument about, Oh, can I separate the artist from the art? Blah, 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 blah. That's a really mm-hmm. good way to put it. So in a sense, it kind of would be better if he didn't push that narrative or yeah. if, if all of this shit is made up about it. And it's just like, no, nah, he's still supporting Trump. It's like, hey, listen, there's plenty of people out there that I love to watch, read, and listen to who I, you know, do not agree politically and vice versa as well. And you know what? It's cool. There's some people out there who I'm going to be like, you probably did something really, really wrong. I'm not going to be in static. I'm not going to be out here going like, Woody Allen is the greatest director of all time, even though he like assaults women. Um, Yeah. But if it's like, listen, I vote Republican. I'm like, hey, man that's cool. I love your art. It's all chill. Like there's a difference between that. So like he's still kind of sitting in that boat of like, he's in an extreme boat of just the MAGA hat wearing the outspoken, the, the wild quote, slavery was a choice, blah, blah, blah. Like all that shit is trash and it sucks. It's absolute trash. And I'm going to be like, like, I'm, I'd be more apt to give him a break if it was like a, he wasn't taking his bipolar medicine and just went off the deep end that way. Because yes, like you do things out of your control for like right. that. But if they're like it was secretly a hoax, I'd be like, dude, stop. I'm like, this is just making it worse. It's like it's this yeah. is not putting more dirt into the hole. This is digging deeper into the hole. Like, yeah, you're yeah. Like, yeah. Just just leave it leave it alone. Let your it best be. thing is is just to keep staying in Wyoming and just being quiet. Cause he's been quiet recently and it's been nice and just put out the music. Yes. That's the best thing that he's that he could possibly do. Which I feel like he will. I agree. Like I think he's just gonna continue to just be quiet. I also don't think he's gonna put out another Christian rap album. <laughs> I wonder. I'm really I curious. I don't think so. I think I think this will be like when Snoop Dogg did it. Like Snoop Dogg put out a reggae album, went back to rapping, put out a gospel album, still was rapping. I feel yeah. like it was kind of like a side project thing. I don't yeah. think he should. I'm and if he does it again, he should collab with actual Christian rappers. I also agree with that. Like that was my one thing I thought was missing from Jesus is King was I was like, where are the actual people who are based in this? You could at least get Lecrae. Like I know you probably, you probably it may not be aware of like the what up RGs and all that stuff. But I'm like, you could at least get a Lecrae or an Andy on here. Yeah. Like, those are pretty big names within the space that you're trying to now operate. Like you should collab with them. Um, I think that's a good point. They're supposed to be, they'd said there was one coming out called God's country. Uh huh. What the next one was going to be titled. I don't know. The last thing he put out was the uh, service album that he was not on. He just, put it out Which, for that them. album was great that album was fire because it was, was awesome it was the part that a lot of people were like i really wish jesus is king was all of the first 30 seconds of it because the first 30 seconds was just like the the choir 
Mm-hmm. And so then he put on an hour and a half long thing of the choir. And I was like, wait, like this, this is some fire gospel choir right here. Like that was necessary. Yeah. But absolutely. where do we go now? Like if the next album is not Jesus religious related, it was a phase. If it yeah, is, yeah. then I will, it's going to be, a, it'll have to put on multiple projects for me to be like, this isn't a phase. Yes, absolutely. So hey, the last thing I would like to talk about today, did you see Eminem's greatest rappers list? I did. I did. Um, it was missing a handful of people that he shouted out before that I thought would be on there. But other than that, I was like, this doesn't entirely surprise me. Um, the only people, the good. only one that surprised me was Joyner Lucas making the list. I'm not surprised because I knew he was going to put some newer artists on there. Yeah. Like he put Kendrick and Cole mm-hmm. on there. Um, I, I was just, I was surprised that he didn't put Drake on there. Um, considering mm. that Eminem's big comeback feature was forever. Right. I agree. Just, I thought he would have put, but I like how he put Andre 3000 and Big Baby yeah. King. He put Andre. some like solid ones on like King Crooked, like all, yeah. the, he had a range. It wasn't, he had mainstream, he had like new, he had old, he had small, he had street, he had all kinds of things, which I think is what makes up most people or should make up most people's greatest rappers list. You can't just be out here going like, I'm just going to put these two people because they're on the charts. They, yeah. They're new. Like he had a range. And I'm glad it also wasn't all just like, old school he wasn't just like Tupac and Biggie and they'd be like man the man come okay. on like the baby yeah it, it could have been it would just be weird but I was surprised Logic was not on there um but then I'm again honestly not surprised Logic was uh, wasn't on there it's like just like I love Logic but Logic just raps fast and he doesn't say a whole lot usually when he does rap fast and there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes yeah. you just like, it's fun to hear. It's like, it's cool to see tall people be tall. It's cool to see somebody rap fast. But like, just like with the things that they say in speed, Joyner, or can, I, in my personal opinion, Joyner Lucas can walk all over Logic that way. Um, with not just like him being like, oh yeah, I can rap fast. Like rapidly rap, rap, hacky sack, lyrical, miracle, spiritual. Like it is, he's like saying things and like, actively talking about stuff um and like i was like when logic and hopped on isis Mm -hmm. like i expected logic to try to like 44 more bars it but he didn't and i was like that was low-key really smart (laughs) it was like a good verse it was a fast verse but it wasn't like like and it was cool and also like homicide changes so much when Mm Eminem comes on like it's a cool like the hook is really cool and but the moment Eminem goes chicka 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 like Jay-Z the song is completely like it is no longer a logic song yeah that's fair you're just like excuse me I remember just stopping it at that moment I was like I don't need to listen to the rest of this this is gonna be the greatest thing ever yeah that's Um, it yeah that's fair I just I was more just like surprised I was like I also know too like he, they asked for five and he ended up giving like almost like 12 or 15. Yeah. So he was like generous about it. Cause I think also he was like, I'm not trying to offend nobody that you're not on the list. And I think like a logic, like one probably didn't see it cause he's not on social media right now, but two, yeah. he wouldn't be upset over it. He'd be like, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I would he has just, a feature. He has a feature. Like I was just kind of surprised cause they do have a feature and because they do have a relationship and everything like that. And he's also shouted him out before but yeah he doesn't need to shout but also, out Eminem again. Is like shouted out a lot of people before that yeah on the list like um like he's talked about how much he like since uh, music to be murdered by he's talked about how much he loves young ma and mm-hmm. um anderson pack mm-hmm. Tolliver, like different lanes of yeah people. it's just like um, it's asking like what's your favorite movie and that's hard like you're gonna list like five but in reality you're like oh my god i really wish i had more time yeah. to list 10 more because you don't want to disrespect nothing like you have a wide breath like mm-hmm. you easily could have put a bunch more people on there that he shot out before but i thought it'd been really funny if he put little yachty on there just to be funny yeah i don't think i don't think he would say something like that though no no and he's not gonna try to push buttons either because no they everyone would be like he's joking um, i also still think i think eminem called off when like nick cannon 
like put out those like four diss tracks on him in the span of a week. I think Eminem called everybody and said, "Don't say anything. Just please don't. Like, it's not even worth my because time." I think because I think Royce had a response. I think Joyner Lucas had a response. I think King Crooked had a response. I think Bizarre had a response. And I think he had a response. And I think they all like together. I think and and I think I think M called them. And he was like, "Don't you know what? We don't need to don't do waste this. your time. It's pointless." Oh man, because like I remember when it started coming out, a lot of those guys. Like, also got, like, it's kind of low-key diss in there, and you just kind of saw, I think it was Joyner just tweeted out the eyes, and I was like, oh, this could get bad. I was like, these are not people that you want to be on the wrong side of hip-hop-wise. Because, like, Royce, Royce to 5'9", is one of the few people that I think could rap Eminem under the table. Mm -hmm. And that is saying something. In just, like, watching, like, it's in, like, King Crooked, like, kind of said, he's like, and he made a video. It was like, just in case you forgot, we're still back here. And as soon as he says the word, you're done. You know, and I think Eminem was like, they know that we can do it. How, like, as much as I would have loved to hear just those guys diss somebody collectively, I feel like they would have just summoned, like, that would be the equivalent of summoning the Dragon Balls. If <laughs> you put all of those guys on the same track and just said, "Hey, diss these people," yeah, it's like, kind of it's kind of been... like uh, the MCU trying to respond back to hate mail from the DC. It's like what happened to Dax on YouTube, but Dax has since redeemed himself. But it was like when he dissed everybody, then everybody one by one was like, "Hey, fuck you, you're dumb." I I just I thought that was really interesting because you you could definitely feel like something was coming mm -hmm. and I think Eminem just like called everybody like off. The, like, don't, don't, even, don't, even, yeah. don't even stress. Not even that he would need help. Right. I just think it would have been cool if they had taken that beat and just kind of ripped everyone to shreds. Because as much as I love like the guys from Wild and Out that were on those tracks, it was just not good to watch. Yeah, it was not good. It was also funny to see which guys from Wild and Out didn't weren't on there like dc young fly loves eminem and he's like i'm not gonna and he there. also loves nick cannon so it was interesting i would have that would have put him in a really tough position because mm -hmm. i know he would have written written for nick cannon but it would have hurt him a little bit to go after eminem like that yeah that's an interesting point yeah that's a good one i, I did say this it was, it was pretty cool it was fun because you i would never expect him to actually put out a list i did not either like that. yeah you don't you don't get lists from people who are usually on the, the list. One, on the list, yeah. Like we don't yeah. have a Kendrick Lamar, my favorite rappers list. We don't have a J Cole, my favorite rappers list. Like we don't have Tupac and Biggie either. I mean, they did, but still, yeah. Like we don't have those a lot of the time. So like asking like someone, many people would call a goat, is very rare. Yeah, yeah. So that was cool. And so uh, that's a that's the biggest cosign you could get. Yeah, that's one. That definitely one of the biggest cosigns like in the rap industry that you could get is from that guy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Have you seen um the Zach Fox cosign video on Genius? Yes, yes, I have. The mo the Duke Deuce moment is my favorite thing ever because he's just like, hold on, yeah. <laughs> he's like, I already know the words to this. I've been popping that before. Oh, dude, Duke Deuce is the future. And if you haven't listened to Crunk A Dead, the remix with Little John, Juicy J, and Project Pat, which the whole song is a Project Pat beat anyway, and so it was cool to watch him come back to something like that. Yeah. Um, but Duke Deuce is the greatest. And if you haven't seen him dance, just watch that boy dance because it's <laughs> nuts. He's so big and he can move so well. He can. He really can. Yeah, but I love the video. Somebody took the beginning of that and overlaid it over um, two of the uh, – protest groups i think in houston like meeting up with each other mm -hmm. and everybody just started like turning up and jumping around and i don't think it was actually played there but it was cool just to watch that like one group was like yeah yeah <laughs> and they all just like ran together and i was like let's go um but yeah that's all i have to say on same word all right well this has been once again another episode of wrapped thank you all for listening and or watching because we are now putting up visual 
recordings on YouTube. Um, so you should hit those up so you can see our faces and like see what we're actually recording and throwing on our screens and see the artwork that we've been talking about. Um, otherwise, thank you for your time. Uh, you can always follow us on Instagram at wrapped podcast or send us an email at wrapped podcast at gmail.com. Feel free to visit our website, message us. Um, thank you for your support and we will see you again, hopefully soon and not another hiatus, but we're trying our best out here. We're trying <laughs> to be um, respectful, but also, also, also both of us have our own lives and things to do as well. So we'll keep you guys posted. Instagram is going to be a place you're going to want to visit for when we're going to be dropping episodes. So hoping to go back to a weekly basis uh, for quite a while, but just stay patient. All right. Peace, love, happiness. Arrest the cops that killed Brianna Taylor. Peace. <laughs>